بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذن له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد So we reached the third lesson uh, uh, following on from yesterday's lesson we've arrived to the third sitting or the third lesson and this is in the um, rulings with regards to fasting in Ramadan so we'll just continue here in the Arabic as you can see on the screen inshallah <clears throat> المجلس الثالث في حكم صيام رمضان الحمد لله الذي لا مانع لما وهب ولا معطي لما سلب طاعته للعاملين أفضل مكتسب وتقواه للمتقين على نسب هيئ قلوب أوليائه للإيمان وكتب وسهل لهم في جانب طاعته كل نصب فلم يجدوا في سبيل خدمته أدنى تعب فقدر الشقاء على أشقياء حين زاغوا, حين زاغوا فوقعوا في العطب أعرضوا عنه وكفروا به فأصلاهم نارا ذات لهب أحمده على من حنى من فضله ووهب وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هزم الأحزاب وغلب وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله الذي استفاه الله وانتخب صلى الله عليه وعلى صاحبه أبي بكر الفائق في الفضائل والرتب وعلى عمر الذي فر الشيطان منه وهرب وعلى أثمان ذي النورين التقي النقي الحسب وعلى علي سهره وابن عمه في النصب وعلى بقية أصحابه الذي نكتس الذي نكتسوا في الدين على فخر ومكتسب وعلى التابعين لهم بإحسان ما أشرق النجم وغرب وسلم تسليما. <تصفيق> so the Sheikh uh, starts off with the opening statement and he says uh, all praise is due to Allah the one who, where there is no withholder of what he has given or bestowed when he does so, and there is no giver of what he has withheld. Uh, obedience is to him is the best gain uh, for those of those laborers and who fear him is the highest, and those who fear him, they are of the highest kinship of the pious. He prepared the hearts of his pious believers with faith, and he eases for them their difficulties, i.e. the obstacles in the way of being obedient to him. As a result, they don't find any hardship in the path of his service, and he predestined wretchedness on the wretched due to their deviation from the path, the Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Thus they fell into condemnation and perdition. They turned away from him and disobeyed him. So as a result, they were burned in the blazing fire. And so we thank him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for what he has given us from his bounty. And then the Shaykh, he continues and says, I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship in truth except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is deserved of all worship. He defeated the, the, the believers. No, sorry, uh, I'll take that back. He, he defeated the disbelievers. By aiding the believers. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. The one who was chosen by his Lord. May Allah jalla wa ala shower his blessings on him. His companion Abu Bakr, the one who exceeded the people in virtues and rank. And Umar, 
the one who the devil ran away from and fled from, and Uthman, the owner of the two lights, the two daughters of the Prophet ﷺ, the pious, and on Ali, his cousin, may Allah show his blessings on the rest of the Prophet's companions, those who have achieved the highest status in the religion, and on those who follow their footsteps in a good manner, up until the day of judgment. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, he says, O oh my brothers in Islam, إِنَّ صِيَامَ رَمَضَانَ أَحَدُ أَرْكَانِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَمَبَانِيهِ عَلِضَامِ قال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أياما معدودات فمن كان منكم مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من من أيام أخر وعلى الذين يتيقونه فدية طعام مسكين فمن تتوع خير فهو خير له وأن تصوم خير لكم إن كنتم تعلمون شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى لل شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصمه ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فإدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسرى ولا يريد ولا يريد بكم العسرى ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون سورة البقرة that's verse 183 to 185 so the Sheikh says oh my brothers in Islam he says indeed uh, the, the, the fasting of Ramadan is one of the pillars of Al-Islam, and it's one of its uh, foundations, great and magnificent foundations within our religion. And then the Shaykh uh, mentioned the ayah that we've just read, and he said, um, in a rough translation of that, if you go to the Quran, uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 183 to 185, we can read that, O you who believe, observing the fasting is, pres uh, is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, that you may become al-muttaqun, the pious. Observing, observing the fasting for a fixed number of days, but if any of you is ill or on a journey, the same number should be made up from other days. And as for those who can't, uh, and as for those who can fast with difficulty, e.g., an old man, etc., they have a choice either to fast or to feed a poor person. For every day. But whoever does good of his own accord, it is better for him, and that you fast, it is better for you if only you know. The month of Ramadan, in which was revealed the Quran, a guidance for mankind and clear proofs for the guidance and the criterion between right and wrong. So whoever of you cites the crescent on the first night of the month of Ramadan, i.e., is present at his home, he must observe fasting. That month, and whoever is ill or on a journey, the same number of days which one did not observe the fasting must be made up on other days. Allah intends for you ease, and He does not want to make things difficult for you. He wants that you must complete the same number of days and that you must magnify Allah, i.e., to say takbir Allahu Akbar. Allah is the most great on seeing the crescent of the months of Ramadan and Shawwal for having guided you so that you may be grateful to Him. So that's the translation of the ayah, and, and, and this is going to set uh, the stage uh, for the rest of the lesson uh, when we read more about what the Shaykh uh, mentions and goes through with us, inshallah. So we'll continue. The Shaykh says, then the Shaykh mentions a, a hadith, and he says, وَقَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ The Prophet ﷺ said, بُنِيَ الْإِسْلَامُ عَلَى خَمْسٍ شَهَادَةِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدٌ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ وَحَجِّ الْبَيْتِ وَصَوْمِ رَمَضَانَ مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ So that's a hadith that's been agreed upon. And also there's a slightly different uh, uh, narration from Muslim, uh, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ Imam Muslim. And uh, the ending is, وَصَوْمِ رَمَضَانِ وَحَجِّ الْبَيْتِ So the ending is slightly different. We'll go through that in a second. So the translation of that is that um, Islam is built upon five. Built upon five. Testifying that Allah has, uh, that Allah has no partisan uh, and is deserved of all worship 
and la ilaha illallah that he has uh, that there's no deity in truth except Allah and he's deserved of all worship and that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is a messenger and servant of Allah and that and that the prayers established and that zakat and obligatory charity is established for the one who reaches the nisab um and the, and that making um hajj or pilgrimage to the house al kaaba and fasting in the month of ramadan all these are obligatory right and uh, as we mentioned uh, the um the other narration the other narration is a slightly different ending so where hajj is mentioned here in the first narration we read the hajj is mentioned first and then ramadan the fasting of ramadan is mentioned in the other narration it's fasting that is mentioned first and uh, hajj is mentioned after uh, and and so, uh, so i just like to mention a benefit uh, 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 with regards to why that is might be the case in a different narration is that because um ramadan uh, um sorry um is that um, fasting in Ramadan uh, was uh, declared an obligation first, and that was the second year after Hijrah. And Hajj uh, was uh, declared uh, an obligatory act um, after the eighth of Hijrah, so that after the eight after eight years of the Hijrah. So there's just an extra bit of information there for us. Uh, to ponder over. So the Sheikh says, he says, وَأَجْمَلْ مُسْلِمُونَ عَلَىٰ فَرْضِيَّةِ صَوْمِ رَمَضَانَ إِجْمَاءً قَتْعِيًّا مَعْلُومًا بِالْضُرُورَةِ مِنْ دِينِ الْإِسْلَامِ فَمَنْ أَنْكَرَ وُجُوبَهُ فَقَدْ كَفَرَ فَيُسْتَتَابُ فَإِنْ تَابَ وَأَقَرَّ بِوُجُوبِهِ وَإِلَّا قُتِلَ كَافِرًا مُرْتَدًّا عَنِ الْإِسْلَام لا يغسل ولا يكفن ولا يصلى عليه ولا يدع له بالرحمة ولا يدفن في في مقابر المسلمين وإنما يحفر له بعيدا في مكان ويدفن لإن لا يؤذي الناس برائحته ويتعذى أهله بمشاهدته. So the Sheikh mentions that um, that the Muslim Ummah has agreed upon the obligatory act of fasting in the month of Ramadan. It's absolutely clear, no doubt about it, in terms of necessity, in terms of uh, the deen of Islam, that one must fast the month of Ramadan. And so whoever disavows or rejects it, rejects this obligation, then he has committed kufr. So the one who says that, oh no, it's not obligatory, in the, in the month of Ramadan, that fasting is not obligatory in the month of Ramadan, then he has committed kufr, is outside of the fold of Islam, is disbelieved. So then it is um, sought from him to encourage, he's encouraged to uh, seek forgiveness and come back from what he said, in terms of what he's just said there. And if he does uh, go back on what he has said and, and affirms the truth that it's obligatory, then that's good. And his is 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 uh, toba is accepted, his repentance accepted. But if he remains upon what he said, then then it's upon him. The capital punishment is upon him, and he 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 dies a kafir, uh, and the murtad, the one who uh, turns away from the deen, an apostate, right? And so therefore, because of that, then he his body isn't washed. In preparation of his funeral, the the body isn't washed, uh, is not um uh, is not wrapped up in white sheets, uh is not the, the janaza prayer is not upon him and is not read upon him, uh he's and 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 there's no dua or supplication made to Allah for him, in terms of mercy seeking mercy for him from Allah subhanahu wa taala, and he isn't buried in the uh, with the Muslims in the graves of the Muslims, and rather. He is uh, buried somewhere else, far away, uh, and and so uh, and and he's just buried somewhere else, far away, in order that that is the smell of his wretched body is not affecting anybody, and that his own family don't you know see him and see in the state that he died will remind him of of the way you know he died upon kufr. So this is because all of this is because um, 
is because he's he's uh, declared a kafir because of what he said. Then the Sheikh continues and he says, "Furida siyamu Ramadan fi fi sana tithaniyati min al hijra, wasama Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam tisa sinin." So then the Sheikh says that, as we mentioned earlier as well, uh, the Sheikh says that uh, that um, that the fasting of Ramadan was made obligatory. Uh, uh, after the second year of Hijrah and the second year of Hijrah, and and then the Sheikh mentions a benefit for us as well regarding the Prophet Sallallahu that he fasted uh, nine years of his prophethood. He fasted nine years um, in total, and so uh, the Sheikh continues. Then and we'll just move the pages, inshallah. Right, let's move the pages, inshallah. Right, so the Sheikh continues and he says, وَكَانَ فَرْضُ, وَكَا, وَكَانَ فَرْضُ الصِّيَامِ عَلَى مَرْحَلَتَيْنِ So, basically, at that time, uh, when these ayah was revealed, the ayahs that we read at the start of the lesson were revealed, one of them was abrogated. We'll go through that, inshallah. The Sheikh will mention it to us. Um, the Sheikh mentions here that fasting is upon two levels. Or two perspectives, and he's going to explain that to us. He says, "Al marhala al ula, al tahiru bain al siyam wal itam ma tafdil al siyam alayh. Al marhala al thaniya, taayin al siyam bidun tahir, fa fi al sahihin an salamat ibn al aqwa, radi Allahu anhu, qala, lama nazalat wa ala al ladin yutiqunahu fidya taam miskin, kana man arada an yuftira yuftadi." يعني فعل حتى نزلت الآية التي بعدها فنسختها يعني بها قوله قوله تعالى فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليسمه ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر فأوجب الله الصيام عينا بدون تخير. So then. Uh, the Sheikh mentions that there's uh, two two points to look at in terms of fasting. That there's two levels. So the first one uh, was that uh, there's a choice. There was a choice. So there was a choice between fasting and feeding uh, uh, the masakin, the poor people, feeding them. And it was preferred. That obviously, fasting was preferred in that perspective. Then the next one is that. Uh, that fasting, it was fasting with no choice. You fast the month of Ramadan, no choice at all. And then the Sheikh mentions in the Sahihain, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, uh, one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Salamatu ibn Walakwa, radiyallahu anhu, uh, said, he said that when this ayah was revealed, which we just said, وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُتِيقُونَ فِدْيَةٌ تَعَمُ مِسْكِينَ So with regards to uh, feeding uh, the masakin, if you're not able to fast, or when that was mentioned, uh, he says that, then whoever wanted to, um, let's say, um, fast uh, and break their fast, in terms of obviously fasting, then you break your fast and wanted to fast, and they fasted, and the ones who wanted to feed uh, the poor people in terms of the fidya, then they would do that as well. There was, in the first level, there's a choice. He says, open till when the ayah was, re the ayah that came after it, that was re revealed, and he abrogated uh, this ayah that we just read. And the ayah that came after it was, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ, ومن, uh, فمن شهد مِنْكُمْ أَشَهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْهُ uh, Until the end of this ayah. So that uh, where Allah mentioned after that, that whoever um, uh, enters the month of Ramadan and uh, uh, sees the, the new moon for, uh, for Ramadan and enters the month of Ramadan, uh, then he should fast. And whoever is poorly or ill, Whoever is ill or whoever is uh, on their travels, so then they make up their fast on another day. So there's two different perspectives here. But the Sheikh will explain it in more detail uh, for us. So then the Sheikh says, Allah siyam aynan biduni takhir. So then here that Allah has, has, has made obligatory fasting without that choice. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, <clears throat> let's move this page forward. The Sheikh mentions, he says, وَلَا يَجِبُ أَصَوْمُ حَتَّى يَثْبُتَ دُخُولُ الشَّهْرِ فَلَا يَصُومُ قَبْلَ دُخُولِ الشَّهْرِ لِقَوْلِ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ 
لا يتقدمن أهدكم رمضان بصوم يوم أو يومين إلا أن يكون رجل كان يصوم صومه فليصوم ذلك اليوم رواه البخاري. so that's hadith. so the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. so the sheikh just continues and he says. so therefore uh, it was uh, fasting is obligatory uh, up until uh, we enter the month of Ramadan. basically you enter the month of Ramadan. first of Ramadan fasting starts. Um, and therefore fasting does not begin or start before the start of Ramadan. so you don't. Uh, uh, you know, uh, start fasting in in the month before it, Shaban, for example. Um, so then, there's a hadith of the Prophet uh, from the Prophet on the authority of the Prophet here, um, and um, uh, the Sheikh mentions here that we translate this that um, that nobody the Prophet said that none of you will uh, proceed the month of Ramadan by fasting even a day or two days, as an example, uh, and uh, except. Um, for the one who is accustomed to, for example, the person who fasts, you know, the, th- the white days of each month and the Monday and Thursday. If that falls upon him in terms of in the month of Sha'ban, then there's no problem because that's his uh, habit. But otherwise, the uh, point being that we fast the month of Ramadan only. Right? When Ramadan starts, we start fasting for the, months of Ram- uh, for the month of Ramadan and those fasts are connected to the month of Ramadan. <clears throat> We just move the page, inshallah. Give me one second. Okay, give me one second. Get on the right page. Right. So then uh, the share continues. And he says, وَيُحْكَمُ بِدُخُولِ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانْ بِوَاحِدٍ مِنْ أَمْرَيْنِ So, in terms of uh, how we go about establishing when the month of Ramadan has, has come to us and we are in that month, then the Sheikh says that there's two affairs that we look at. He says the first one, he says, الْأَوَّلُ رُؤْيَةُ هِلَالِهِ لِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْهُ وَقَوْلِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى الله عليه so uh, the first of that of, of those evidences are the first ones from the Quran and we read this ayah already from the three ayahs that we read from Surah Al-Baqarah and um, uh, the Shaykh mentions it again he says the ayah with regards to where Allah says so whoever of you uh, was witnesses the month of Ramadan then fast it then fast then start fasting and then from the Prophet uh, from the uh, hadith of the Prophet uh, which is muttafaqun alayh Agreed upon uh, where he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you see the Hilal, the crescent, then fast. Then fast. So that's clear cut, inshallah. <clears throat> then the Shaykh continues. And he says, Wala yushtaratu an yarahu kullu wahidin bi nafsihi, bal ida rahu man. يَثْبُتُ بِشَهَادَتِهِ دُخُولُ الشَّهْرِ وَجَبَ الصَّوْمُ عَلَى الْجَمِيعِ So then, um, uh, the Sheikh just mentions here, a benefit of all of that, you know, if one person sees the uh, crescent, if one person sees the crescent, that's fine. It's enough uh, for us to accept that and start fasting. It's not required that there needs to be a particular number or many people relaying the information that they've seen the... Um, the crescent or the new moon for the month of Ramadan. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, وَيُشْتَرَتُ لِنْقَوْلِ الشَّهَادَةِ بِالرُّؤْيَةِ أَنْ يَكُونَ شَاهِدُ بَالِغَ نَاقِلًا مُسْلِمًا مَوْثُوقًا بِخَبَرِهِ لِأَمَانَتِهِ وَبَسَرِهِ فَأَمَّا الصَّغِيرُ فَلَا يَثْبُتُ الشَّهْرُ بِشَهَادَتِهِ لِأَنَّهُ لَا يُوثَقُ بِهِ وَأَوْلَى مِنْهُ الْمَجْنُونَ والكافر لا يثبت الشهر بشهادته أيضا لحديث ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما قال جاء عرابي إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إني رأيت الهلال يأني رمضان فقال أتشهد أن لا إله إلا الله قال نعم قال أتشهد أن محمد رسول الله قال نعم قال يا بلال أذن في الناس فليسوم فليسوم غدا أخرجه الخمسة إلا أحمد 
So then the Sheikh says, he says, uh, the condition is that uh, um, uh, in terms of accepting the person's uh, witnessing of the crescent, of seeing the crescent, um, there are some conditions though. So we take that one, let's say one person comes, there's a condition that he, ha- he has to be, he has to have aql, that he, he's not, um, for example, um, uh, what's the word we'd say in English? That He has intellect, you know, he's able to distinguish uh, between different things. He's a Muslim. He's trustworthy with his uh, information uh, and and also is trustworthy in terms of his sight, his vision, that he has good vision. Um, and and then the Shaykh uh, compares and contrasts with those conditions with what's opposite to that. He says, so for example, um, a person who's young, a young person, a sagheer, uh, a small person, for example, a child, yeah, who hasn't reached the age of puberty, then their uh, testification of seeing uh, the moon uh, is not accepted, right? And um, and also um, in terms of uh, a person who is crazy, who's senile, um, their testification is not accepted either. Neither is the disbelievers' testification of seeing the moon either, and that's because. Because of the hadith um, uh, of uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, where he said, uh, um, where uh, he uh, well, on the authority of the Prophet here is uh, where he mentioned that um, that uh, a Bedouin, an Arab Bedouin, came to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said, indeed, I've seen the new moon, you know, the crescent, meaning Ramadan has started. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, do you testify that that um, that Allah has the right to be worshipped and none other than Him, right? Uh, and that you testify that uh, an la ilaha illallah. Uh, he said yes. Then the Prophet ﷺ, uh, asked him, Do you testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? And he said yes. And then the Prophet ﷺ, after asking them two questions, he uh, said to Bilal, um, announce to the, uh, to the people that they should, st- they should start fasting. Tomorrow, and that's uh, that was uh, you can see the footnotes uh, in the um, in the text, inshallah, for the references for that. So let's just go back. I'm skipping the pages. Um, let me just get to the right page. <clears throat> so then the Sheikh continues and he says. He says, "Woman, woman, la yuthaku bi khabarihi bi kounihi ma'roofan bil kadibi, or bi tsarroi, or kana zayif al basari, bi haythu la yunkinu an yarahu, fala yuthbatu al shahr bi shahadatihi li shakki fi sidkihi, or rujhani kadibihi." So here the Sheikh mentions uh, some other uh, benefits for us as well with regards to. Uh, whose information is not accepted with regards to uh, when they say that they've seen the crescent. So we'll just, I'll just translate that in a second. Give me, give me one second, brothers. So let's just go to that now. Uh, so then the Sheikh also mentioned, he says, so whoever's, uh, so the one who uh, is not trusted with the information that they bring, why? Because they are known, they are known amongst the people that that person's known for lying, or being hasty in their judgments, or is weak. They have a poor vision, for example. Then it's not possible, uh, you know, for for to to accept uh, the person's word for that because of their uh, because of obvious doubt of uh, uh, their trustworthiness and accepting their their words or their statement as being the truth. Then the Shaykh, he continues, and he says, وَيَثْبُتُ دُخُولَ شَهْرِ رَمَضَانَ خَاسَةً بِشَهَادَةِ رَجُلٍ وَاحِدٍ لِقَوْلِ ابْنِ عُمَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا تَرَاءَ النَّاسُ الْحِلَالَ فَأَخْبَرْتُ النَّبِيَّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أَنِّي رَأَيْتُهُ فَصَامَ وَأَمَرَ وَأَمَرَ النَّاسَ بِسِيَامِهِ رَوَاهُ أَبُ دَاوُودُ وَالْحَاكِمُ وَقَالَ عَلَى شَرْطِ مُسْلِمٍ 
So <clears throat> the Shaykh has said there, and he continues, and he says, so um, so he says, in terms of the Shah Ramadan, specifically, uh, you know, also witnessing the moon, um, uh, and that only takes one person, and that, that is the condition that only one person is required, um, is from the uh, saying of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu when he when he said that he saw the people looking out trying to sight the moon they're trying to sight the crescent for Ramadan and he uh, and uh, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu um, he um, he said he informed the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he saw that he saw it, that he seen the crescent you know and that the you know that's a you know that that's a sign of Ramadan. So then the uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, he said, he, he, he fasted, he said that he fasted, uh, he told the uh, people to fast, he fasted and he commanded the people uh, as well to fast. Uh, and that's narrated by Abu Dawood and the uh, Hakim uh, upon the condition of Muslim in terms of the grading of the hadith, yeah? uh, which you can look in the footnotes, inshallah. So let's continue. So then the Shaykh says, he continues and he says, وَمَنْ رَآهُ مُتَيَقِّنًا رُؤْيَتَهُ وَجَبَ عَلَيْهِ إِخْبَارُ وُلَاتِ الْأُمُورِ بِذَلِكَ وَكَذَلِكَ مَنْ رَآهِ هِلَالَ شَوَّالٍ وَذِي الْحِجَّةِ ذِي الْحِجَّةِ لِأَنَّهُ يَتَرَتَّبُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ وَاجِبُ الصَّوْمِ وَالْفِطْرِ وَالْحَجِّ وَمَا لَا يَتِمُّ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبُ وَإِنْ رَآهُ وَحْدَهُ فِي مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٍ لَا يُمْكِنُهُ إِخْبَارُ وُلَاتِ الْأُمُورِ فَإِنَّهُ يَسُومُ وَيَسْعَى فِي إِيسَالِ الْخَيْرِ آآ الْخَبَرِ إِلَى وُلَاتِ الْأُمُورِ بِقَدْرِ مَا يَسْتَطِيعَ So then the Sheikh says in this paragraph that it just mentions that uh, once, the, um, once it's seen, once the crescent is seen for Ramadan, you know, with all certainty, um, then it's obligatory uh, for that person when he sees it, he should inform the authorities. In the Muslim countries, typically, you know, you inform the authorities and the and, and the leader of the Muslims. You know, you inform the government. Um, obviously, that's not always the case. That's not the case in the Muslims who live in other than the Muslim countries. Uh, so, um, and then he says, likewise, uh, when the when the hilal hilal is seen, the the the, the crescent for uh, shawal is also seen. It's the same thing, same ruling as well. That you only see the crescent for uh, the shawal. You know, you inform the authorities. It's the same system that's in place. And dhul hij, likewise dhul hijja as well. Uh, he says because it's obligatory. Uh, um, that uh, he says because this is um, organized in that particular way. Uh, he says uh, that in in that order of the oblig the obligation of fasting during the month of Ramadan and also that in terms of uh, Hajj as well. Um, so then the Sheikh he says here. So he just mentions here that um, he says also if a person is lives on their own, lives far away, secluded from the people in general, then um, it's if it is very difficult for him to obviously inform the authorities. Then he should obviously start fasting. He should begin fasting, of course, but he should also um, work hard and put effort in trying to relay this information to the authorities as soon as possible upon that which he's capable of, of course. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, Why the Olina Subutu Shahri min Tibali al Hukumati? بِالرَّادِيُ أَوْ غَيْرِهِ وَجَبَ الْعَمَلُ بِذَلِكَ فِي دُخُولِ الشَّهْرِ وَخُرُوجِهِ فِي رَمَضَانَ أَوْ غَيْرِهِ لِأَنَّ إِلَانَهُ لِأَنَّ إِلَانَهُ مِنْ 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 قِبَلِ الْحُكُومَةِ حُجَّةٌ شَرْعِيَّةٌ يَجِبُ الْعَمَلُ بِهَا So then the Sheikh mentions here, he says, so if it is obviously announced uh, that the uh, moon, you know, that the, the month of Ramadan is started and that the new moon has been seen, um, uh, for example, uh, from the uh, from uh, from the government by way of radio, like radio stations, etc., and other forms of of of, of media. Of course, that'll be uh, applicable now as well. For example, now we can see that 
Goldman, uh, Goldman have their Twitter accounts, you know, they make announcements. And so it's the same kind of thing. And that we should obviously act accordingly with regards to the, the information that we receive uh, with regards to Ramadan, then starting and fasting, etc. And so because obviously, so obviously it's clear evidence that it's come from the government. Say, let's say, for example, Saudi Arabia, did their government announce that, uh, and same way, uh, and likewise in other Muslim countries, they announce it, whether that's through the Twitter account or through the radio or whatever other means of media, then, you know, you, you act upon that. And so it's obligatory to act upon that, of course. Then the Sheikh continues and he says, وَلِذَلِكَ أَمْرَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ وَلِذَلِكَ أَمْرَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ بِلَالًا أَنْ يُؤَذِنَا فِي نَاسِ مُؤْلِنًا ثُبُوتَ شَهْرِ لِيَسُومُ حِينَ ثَبَتَ عِنْدَهُ صلى الله عليه وسلم دخوله وجعل ذلك لألال ملزما لهم بالصيام. So uh, again here, uh, where the Sheikh men he mentions to us as well, and likewise, uh, uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded uh, Bilal, uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded Bilal radiallahu anhu and uh, uh, that he um, uh, announce uh, the beginning of Ramadan and the beginning of the month of Ramadan, and so the fasting has begun, uh, same, same, same situation here. And, that, and therefore, uh, uh, informing the people uh, to fast and that Ramadan has started and has entered. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, <clears throat> we'll just skip here, get to the right page. Sorry, brothers. So he says, وَإِذَا ثَبَتَ دُخُولُ شَهْرِ ثُبُوتًا شَرْعِيًّا فَلَا إِبْرَةَ بِمَنَازِلِ الْقَمَرِ لِأَنَّ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَّقَ الْحُكَمْ بِرُؤْيَةِ الْحِلَالِ لَا لا بمنازله فقال صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا رأيتم الهلال فصوموا وإذا رأيتموه فأف... فأفتروا متفق عليه وقال إن شهد وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم إن شهد إن شهد شاهدان مسلمان فصوموا وأفتروا رواه أحمد <clears throat> so let's just, uh, I'll translate that inshallah. So then uh, if there's a legal confirmation of the sighting uh, of the moon, then the then the then uh, in terms of the moon, like in terms of the phases of the moon or whatever it might be, is, is not uh, considered. Uh, uh, um, and, and so is, uh, here, just to point out, to make it more clear, it's because the Messenger of Allah Wasallam related uh, with regards to the ruling of fasting upon sighting the moon, right? So sighting the moon with your eye, with your eye, with your naked eye, you look in the sky, you look up to the sky and you make that sighting. And so the Prophet ﷺ also said that fast if you see the moon and break your fast if you see it. So obviously faster when you're fasting, the time comes to break it as well. So in terms of when you see the moon and you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, the month of Ramadan has started and it's been seen with the naked human eye, um, then you start fasting and you break your fast as well, of course. Also, the Prophet ﷺ said, if two trustworthy Muslims testified that they have seen the moon, then you should fast according to their sighting. Likewise, break your fast according to their sighting. So, you know, it's the same meaning. And um, this is narrated by Ahmad and is graded to be authentic by Shaykh al-Albani, uh, rahmallah, in his book, uh, Irwa al-Ghalil. Uh, yeah. And then the second affair, uh, the Shaykh says, Al-Amr thani مما يحكم فيه بدخول شهر إكمال شهر السابق قبله ثلاثين يوما لأن شهر القمر لا يمكن أن يزيد على ثلاثين يوما ولا ينقص عن تسعة عن تسعة وعشرين يوما وربما يتوالى شهران أو ثلاثة إلى أربعة ثلاثين يوما أو شهران أو ثلاثة إلى أربعة تسعة وعشرين دين يوما لكن الغالب شهر أو شهران كاملة والثالث ناقص. So then the Sheikh just mentioned some other benefits just for us to understand in terms of the lunar calendar and the way that works. And he says, um, that, so the second way of deciding as well is the uh, that how you go about deciding the beginning of the month is the completion of thirty days of the previous month. That is because it's impossible for the uh, lunar uh, for the lunar calendar 
or, or the moon itself, the phase is the way it, it works to exceed 30 days or decrease to less than 29 days. Sometimes it's, uh, it happens to be three or four subsequent months all completing with 30 days. And sometimes it's, it happens to be 29 days in three subsequent months. But most of the time, just out of, uh, on its, uh, based on averages, uh, most of the time it happens that a month or two uh, are completed with 30 days and the next with 29. Therefore, then whenever the month com completes 30 days, then the next day is automatically considered the beginning of the new month, even if the moon is not yet sighted. This is based on the Prophet's statement. Um, when the Prophet Sallallahu said, he said, Sumu li ru'yatihi wa aftiru li ru'yatihi fa in gumiya alaykum ash-shahru fa uddu thalathin. Rawahu Muslim. So that, so the Prophet ﷺ said, fast upon sighting the moon and break your fast upon sighting the moon. And if the clouds block your view, or if it becomes obscured, the sun, uh, sorry, the moon becomes obscured from your view and your vision, uh, and you're not able to see the moon, then complete 30 days of, of the month, of that previous month. So for example, let's say, uh, we're in Sha'aban and we're, we're sighting the moon and we, we can't see it because of the clouds or whatever. Then we complete 30 days of Sha'aban. And then we begin the first day of Ramadan, like that as an, as an example, right? So then uh, the Shaykh continues. And he says, uh, uh, and then he, he just mentioned another uh, narration as well uh, with regards to the one, the narration we just read there is uh, by, uh, uh, in the Riwayat al-Muslim and the other Riwayat, the other Narration is from Bukhari with the wording فَإِنْ غُمْيَ عَلَيْكُمْ فَأَكْمِلُوا إِدَّةَ شَعْبَانِ ثلاثين. So a, a same meaning anyway, that if the moon becomes obscured from your vision, then complete, uh, you know, 30 days of Sha'ban, which we mentioned anyway, alhamdulillah. And then the Shaykh says, وَفِي صَحِيْهِ بْنِ خُزَيْمَةَ مِنْ حَدِيثِ عَيْشَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهَا قَالَتْ كَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم يَتَحَفَّذُ مِنْ شَعْبَانَ مَا لَا يَتَحَفَّذُ مِنْ غَيْرِهِ ثُمَّ يَسُومُ لِرُؤْيَةِ رَمَضَانَ فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْهِ عَدَّ ثَلَاثِينَ يَوْمًا ثُمَّ صَامَ And then with regards to uh, the narration uh, by Aisha رضي الله عنها um, that the Prophet ﷺ um, used to fast in the month of Sha'ban more than in other months so he used to fast more in, in the month of Sha'ban than in other months and then he would fast the month of Ramadan upon seeing the crescent. But if he could not sight the crescent, he would wait till the 30 days of Sha'ban completed. And then the first of Ramadan would start, and then that's when he would start fasting. Um, and that's uh, from the hadith of uh, Khuzayma, Ibn Khuzayma, also Ibn Dawood, and ad dara Qutni, and uh, Shaykh al-Albani, uh, uh, Rahmahullah, uh, graded it to be authentic in his book called Sahih Abu Dawood, or his uh, grading of the Sahih Hadith. Uh, with regards to what is uh, extracted from Abu Dawood. <clears throat> so let's continue, inshallah. So we've nearly finished now, alhamdulillah. We, we, we're there, two paragraphs to go. Alhamdulillah. So uh, um, then the Shaykh continues uh, and he says, وَبِهَذِهِ الْأَحَادِيثِ تَبَيِّنَ أَنَّهُ لَا يُصَامُ رَمَضَانُ قَبْلَ رُؤْيَةِ حِلَالِهِ قَبْلَ رُؤْيَةِ حِلَالِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يُرَى الْحِلَالُ أُكْمِلَ شَعْبَانُ ثَلَاثِينَ يَوْمًا وَلَا يُصَامُ يَوْمُ الثَّلَاثِينَ مِنْهُ سَوَاءٌ كَانَتِ اللَّيْلَةُ سَهْوًا أَمْ غَيْمًا لِقَوْلِ عَمَّارِ بْنِ يَاسِرِ رضي الله عنه من صام اليوم الذي يشك فيه فقد عسى أبو القاسم صلى الله عليه وسلم رواه أبو داود وترمذي والنساء وذكره البخاري تعليقا. So then um, the Sheikh continues and and he says um, that uh, he says with regards to these ahadith and the narrations that we've uh, that we've we've mentioned and that we've read. Uh, the, imp the impermissibility of fasting the month of Ramadan before sighting his crescent. So that's clear to us anyway, uh, that you wouldn't start fasting the month of Ramadan uh, before Ramadan has even entered. Uh, just doesn't wouldn't make sense at all. Um, so then, 
you know, you complete the 30 days of Sha'ban as is, has been established by the Sheikh mentioned it to us from what we've read from the Quran and from the uh, from the uh, hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you know, so you you uh, so then the Sheikh mentions here he says likewise. The impermissibility of fasting on the 30th day of Sha'ban, whether the sky is clear or cloudy, is also established by a way of these texts uh, based on uh, uh, the, uh, the, um, the hadith that uh, Ammar ibn, uh, ibn Yasir uh, radiallahu anhu mentioned. So then the Shaykh closes with final uh, paragraph here for uh, the third sitting that we're reading right now. And he says, Allahumma wafiqna littiba'i al-huda wa jannibna asbab al-halaki wa shaka wa ja'al shahrana hadha lana shahra khayrin wa barakatin wa a'inna fihi ala ta'atika wa jannibna turuqa ma'asiyatik wa aghfir lana wa li walidina والجميع المسلمين وبرحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين. so then the sheikh finishes off with a dua as is his uh, uh, habit with uh, this book that he authored and he says you know um, so he, he he finishes off with the dua and we'll read the translation of that as well إن شاء الله oh Allah grant us success to follow the guidance and keep us away from the causes of destruction and wretchedness. Make this month a month of good and blessing for us. Oh Allah, oh Allah, help us to be obedient to you in this month and keep us away from the means of being disobedient to you. With your mercy, forgive us and our parents and all of the Muslims. For verily, you are the most merciful. And may Allah Jalawala shower his blessings and mercy on our messenger Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His family members His companions and those who follow him Up until the day of judgment So Alhamdulillah we'll conclude there Jazakallah khair brothers uh, Brother Wasib will continue tomorrow inshallah So uh, we'll see you there uh, Same time tomorrow Bidhanallah ta'ala Barakallah fikum Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilaik Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh